All right, today we are back for another flashlight review and we're gonna to try to get straight to the point with this one. This is the Workhouse TS-10. And what I can tell you in a very short, brief synopsis is this is a strictly better flashlight than its nearest competitor in almost every way. And we'll be talking a little bit about that and also comparisons to other flashlights that run this same user interface and similar style. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. First off, this was sent to me by Workhouse, and I probably would have picked one up anyway because it was very inexpensive. The base price for this thing is only $28, and currently it's on sale for at least 10% more. I think it might even be 20%. I'll put a link to it right here and in the description. This is a very impressive piece, and we're going to get into why that is, but let's go ahead and address it in the same way we've done other flashlights, starting with its quality. How's the quality of this flashlight? Well, everything here looks great, um, simply put. I've been able to carry it for about a week, and there's some things that put it above its competitors. And yeah, actually, I don't see anything that doesn't make it above its competitor, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. There's nothing extra fancy about this flashlight, but everything works properly. The button works really, really well. The threading has been lubricated from the factory and everything cinches down really nice and tight. So really nice job with this from Workhouse, solid three out of five. And for the record, everyone's wondering if it's so solid, why am I giving it three out of five? It's because there are two additional levels. There are very well machined production flashlights like the Raylight LAN, for instance, that would be a four out of five. And there are fully customized flashlights, basically turned by hand, and that would be a five out of five. So for any production light, three out of five is exactly what you want. So let's move on. The second one is the user interface. And this is running the Endurial 2.0 with, as you can see, auxiliary emitters. So you'll have all of the additional functions that go along with that. Like it is also true for this, the Noctagon KR4. So here's the thing you need to understand. Endurial 2.0 is very, very complicated. If all I did was show you the user interface, this would probably take about a half an hour, and I'm not even exaggerating on this. So if you want to have me do a complete rundown on how to use this interface, maybe that would be a worthy video, but it's not gonna be something we'll address in this. What you need to know is that this is fully customizable in so many ways, more ways than you probably ever want. It'll even be able to adjust the temperature with which it will start to ramp down its output because of heat. You can do with so much with it. Needless to say, this is a solid five out of five stars. It is not actually my favorite fully customizable interface. It is, however, capable of being turning into anything you want. You can make it a 100% only. You can only have it come on on low. You can have mode memory, no mode memory. It, it, it keeps going. It is so much. Five out of five solid for that. The next one is going to be output. And this is where it's kind of interesting. This is 1400 lumens, which is way up there. However, it is a very diffuse beam. So you're going to get a very wide beam pattern with this. You can see all the way out to these edges. So it's a really, really good flashlight for working up close. Anything within 30, 40 yards is going to be fantastic with this light. It's going to light up absolutely everything. So it's it's still really very much a 5 out of 5 on output from that regard. Keeping in mind that when you use the turbo, you're not going to get that amount of light for all that much time. The amount of heat generated by 1400 lumens through this light is monstrous. It's a lot of power to put through it. I can already barely touch this flashlight, but as I'm holding it, it will automatically ramp itself down to match the appropriate temperature. So there is a, a thermometer in here that controls it. Now, as far as runtime is concerned, it's incredibly variable because this flashlight can be programmed and you can also adjust when those things, you know, decrease and so on. So it's it's very difficult to say uh, how how much the runtime really is for this. And it also depends heavily on the battery. 
This comes with a 900 milliamp hour battery from Workhouse, but I have in it a 1000 milliamp hour uh, vape cell right now because I'm charging the other battery. And that will run a little bit longer, as you would imagine. So it's gonna de it's gonna depend. Now they're saying that the that the maximum output of 1400 lumens will last for an hour and 15 minutes. Let me just make sure I explain this. When you run that hot, you're probably only gonna get that kind of temperature for maybe 15 seconds before it begins to drop, and that's purely from heat alone, not even from losing power. The heat generated is monstrous, and it's a very small package with not a lot of aluminum to dissipate that heat. So just keep that in mind. It's going to continue to drop down until there is an equilibrium of output and heat. Okay. So in a colder environment, it's going to stay it's going to stay higher longer. In a warmer environment, it's going to drop down quicker. Hope that makes sense. Now the nice thing about this uh, is it also has access to an ultra low mode. So you hold press which I didn't do, it went too long. And you can get an ultra low mode, which is very important to me. And of course, double click is going to get you turbo, like in so many other flashlights. So really good in that regard, really good on the low. So the low I actually can give you, you're gonna get how much time? So five days, that's a lot, <laughs> okay. Let's just say that you're going to get quite a bit of runtime on this thing. All right. Let's just run it. Let's just say it like it is. It's a, it's a long runtime on the ultra low mode. And that's actually quite useful because that's really the mode I use often. Now you notice the auxiliary lights on this. These can be shut off or even lowered and do flashing. They can do all kinds of cool things. Just something you should know. It does not have to stay on and drain the battery. But I find it quite useful to have them on at all times because if I put this down on a nightstand when I wake up in the morning, which it's always dark when I do, I can find it immediately. So that is a really nice little feature. And I don't mind the fact that it's draining a little bit of power so that I can have that feature. That's awesome. Okay, so going back to runtime, it's hard to say. I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5 just because it's so variable on that. Uh, and I don't know if anyone can give a definitive on how good the battery life is relative to other flashlights. When it comes to e-switch flashlights running Endurial, it's probably comparable to all of them. Now, the next part is versatility. So a flashlight with Endurial 2.0 has a lot of versatility. You can have it flicker like a candle. You can have it work as an SOS strobe. You can have my God, there's just so much customization. And then on top of it, it has auxiliary red light, which is actually plenty bright enough to see in the dark. And it has a reversible clip. So for me, this is at least a four out of five on versatility. Uh, depending on how you feel about the other benefits of that user interface, it could be even higher, but at least a four out of five on that. Now, the last thing we want to talk about is value. This is where this flashlight absolutely destroys its closest competition. And its closest competition is the Lumentop FWAA. That flashlight comes in around $40, whereas this one starts, starts at $28 and drops down. I think it's currently on sale for $26, something like that. It's ludicrous, and it comes built in with the battery. It's The battery is included. Now, you're going to need a bay charger for this light because it will only take 14500s. So that's something that you have to know before jumping into this. You're gonna need some form of bay charger. And let me tell you, it's better to skimp on this, on the actual body of the flashlight than to skimp on a bay charger. Make sure it's a good one. I will put a link to the one I use and I know that one works, but there are many, many others. Definitely make sure you invest in that before you get this. So that's part of the cost, but even compared to others, with similar footprint and everything else, this is way cheaper. Fantastic job by Workhouse. Now, I should mention it comes with a lanyard as well as spare O-rings, always a plus. It is IPX8 waterproof. And another thing, since we're talking about Workhouse in general, Workhouse is a flashlight brand that has a different OEM. So, so Firin, which we've talked about a lot, is the OEM that makes Workhouse flashlights. And because of that, this clip might seem very familiar. It also 
would not surprise you to know that the Olight baton S1R2 baton clip fits perfectly onto this flashlight and is a far superior pocket clip to the one that comes with it. Not to mention matching, which is always a nice thing. So that is another benefit here. This was true with the HS10 uh, from Soferin, the um, SP10, you know, which they have. The, the point is, is that they use the same dimensions. So you can kind of piggyback off of the ability to utilize these same clips. Really, really excellent. Now, before we do a comparison, talking a little bit about size comparisons, functionality, and so on, let me iterate what, what this light is doing better than every light on this table. And these are significantly more expensive, okay? The button. The button on this is perfect, okay? So my biggest problem, and I'll bring, on, bring in the FW3A here, with Lumentop's button is that it's a very, very short and very, very soft press to turn on this flashlight. If you do not have the automatic lock feature, and by that I mean it will automatically lock itself after 30 seconds of being you know, turned off, which is very cool, you can accidentally turn this on very, very, very easily. Uh, that was the one reason why I kind of sold mine and then repurchased it once I learned the programming features a little bit better. But this won't have that problem. This is a significantly firmer press and a longer press. Like, you can really tell the difference here. In addition to the fact that it has a better amount of pressure needed to press down the button, which I way prefer, it also doesn't get stuck the way sometimes the Lumitop buttons do in both the 3A and the AA um, versions, which the AA is a direct competitor, have this same sticking button problem. So Workos is absolutely annihilating its competition. And neither this nor the AA have the auxiliary lights, which you can then program at different outputs. So needless to say, when it comes to a 14500 only, this might be the best value currently on the market. I love, love, love this button. I, I can't say enough. Um, and the fact that it can take a clip that is easy to replace. Yes, you can buy these SR1 um, uh, Olight S1R2 or S1R1 Eclipse like for like two or three bucks. The fact that you can use those is fantastic. I also know that these are available from Sofirin and Workos as well, so you can always replace them. Not a terrible clip, but that little tab sucks. And you can see the difference. This kind of flows in from here to here, so it slips in very nicely into the pocket without catching on anything. Just a bonus, okay? Fantastic. I don't think I have to say much more here uh, as far as this flashlight is concerned. This is very much a, a, <laughs> a rocket in your pocket. I, I think that's the best way to describe this flashlight. And the cool thing is that it actually comes with a high CRI uh, combination of LEDs. So these actually have 90 plus CRI. And that just means that the light is much nicer on your eyes. And I can attest to that having used it, you know, in the dark every morning for about a week. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, the only comparisons I can really make are to much, much, much larger flashlights. You can see just the relative size. Now, to put this in perspective, this is the Warrior Mini 2. The, the Warrior 3S and the Warrior Mini original, to give you an idea, on size. And the initial output on this is almost comparable to the 1500 lumens of the original Warrior Mini, which is where I got this clip from, by the way. Okay? So, really, really impressive work by Workos. Um, this is absolutely a decent recommendation for me. The one thing I will say is before you buy this, make sure you have a good bay charger. This is a world of flashlights that you need to be ready for. The user interface is very complicated. Be aware of that. Um, you're going to have to invest in some good batteries. I can talk to you about that as well if you're interested. Ask me in the comments. 
and a good bay charger. So it's an ecosystem you have to be aware of. But the good news is that that ecosystem is applicable to flashlights from almost every brand. So Noctagon, Lumentop, Workos, Sofirin. I mean, there's tons of them, right? So that bay charger will be able to charge the 21700, the 18650, and the 16340. If these numbers don't make sense to you, it's because they're, you know, it's complicated in the light world. But start with what I have down in the description. I will put a bay charger I can guarantee will work and some batteries that I think you should take a look at if you want to get started with this. But if you already know everything about us and you have like say the Lumentop FWAA, what you need to know is this. This is strictly better than the Lumentop variant. Strictly better. And the biggest improvement for me is this button. This button is so much better than what Lumentop is offering. So really, really well done by them. That's it. Thank you for your time. I really do appreciate it. We'll talk again soon with probably more flashlight videos. You guys have a good one.